Hello. Um, so in this video, I want to talk about NFs again, and particularly, I want to talk about NFs and self-actualization. So in my previous video on NFs, I talked about NFs and their existential burden. I tried to create a vantage point in which other types could get into the internal space of an NF and understand what it is that exactly constitutes their existence. Uh, I particularly made note of an NF's relationship to uh, pain and suffering and their um, existence and so far as their self's relations to uh, meaning. And so in this video, I want to sort of extend and lead from that discussion to a one that is um, salient and uh, wholly necessary, I feel, given the previous uh, video I made on NFs, and this would be on self-actualization. So I, there is so much to say about self-actualization as a theory and where it arises from. Many people attribute, attribute self-actualization to Maslow and his um, hierarchy of human needs. It would sit at the top of his hierarchy of human needs, but then you can look even further before that and find it in Jung. And you can actually find it before Carl Jung spoke about it in um, Aristotelian uh, logic. And um, it's to say, I don't really know where self-actualization theory began, but those are just some places you can look. And I suppose just uh, what is self-actualization? Well, it's the, um, oh, and before Jung, I hate it when I do that, but it's just I have to be accurate. So it would go, it would go Maslow, Jung, Nietzsche. Aristotle, and whoever else came before that. <laughs> so, um, at least in the reading I've done, and um, self-actualization, insofar as how I'm going to present it, would probably be some more along the lines of uh, what Jung proposed and what can be ascertained from reading the literature on uh, self-determination theory and positive psychology. So, moving from that, um, when we're talking about NFs, I said it in my uh, previous videos that NFs have this um, interesting relationship with pain and suffering insofar as that I think just from my experiences with my other intuitive feeling, with my intuitive feeling friends is that they experience pain and suffering in a magnitude and with a frequency and a scale at which I can't understand. Uh, or most other types can't understand, and that presents a problem for NFs insofar as how are they going to get through the world. And I think it also builds a complex in NFs where they um, take and assume a false self, or what I call the other in this schematic of an NFs journey and existence. NFs, if they can't tell, they're my favorite type outside of... Um, well, I'm not very self-indulgent, so my type isn't my favorite type. I don't know. I don't... Anyways, it's just I do enjoy NFs because I have so many NFs as friends. And um, just they're the most attractive type to me insofar as uh, personal interest and taking interest in people. I don't typically take interest in people, but I do find that out of when I do take interest in people, they're always NFs. But uh, I digress. So, um, I want to start at the beginning of an NF's life. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that this is gospel truth. It is, con it is a conjecture. And it's a conjecture based off of thematic elements I have noticed in the stories of all of my friends. So I apologize if this does not fit your experience, but it may still be applicable to you. So just listen to it and bear in mind that I am an NT. I am an outside source making an analysis. So I may not be fully uh, accurate in my description as I think it may be rather asinine to try and quantify people or make these sort of throw in the dark guesses at times. It is wholly necessary for me to get this framework off the ground. So bear with me. So at the beginning of an NF's life, they have this 
the period in which I call the divine child. Now that's a terminology from Carl Jung, and it's something that all people have, but it just serves a purpose as an image here for how an NF comes into the world. The divine child is radiant. It's something that's glowing where there is just limitless possibilities and potentiality emerging from it through every experience. And this is something that I hear described by uh, my NF friends is that when they came into the world, or at least when they had consciousness about what was going on around them, they saw everything in a sort of wonder, an idealized romantic state. The world had so much brim and color and vibrancy to it. The people in their lives had such magnitude and stature and um, such awe, essence, and glow to them. And in Fs, they live out this, they live out this uh, early existence as the divine child, but then an event will happen. Usually um, through a friend or through a family member or through a parent even, they see a crack. It's, there's some sort of um, nexus point where there is a disappointment and that romantic or cosmopoetic uh, lens and vantage point that they have gets a little tilted and shooken. And the NF is somewhat sent reeling from that. Though, what's so interesting about the NF, they are extremely sensitive individuals. But their sensitivity is something that's internalized and contained. They, you, that's why it's so hard for us to know exactly what's going on with an NF because it's all inside. Um, not just for the ENFP and the INFP, though they have introverted feeling and that's what one would initially think, but also for the ENFJ and the INFJ because they're so um, accommodating that they don't show you what's really going on. What it seems like you have this stage of the divine child and this romantic period for the uh, NF and that's how they come into life and then you have this progressive um, sort of sequential stage of disappointment and disillusionment, disappointment and disillusionment. Steadily over time the NF, I don't know for what period or what stretch of time, is disappointed by life and its experience and their experiences in life and again this may not be accurate to your experience but this is just something I've I've just this is just a uh, framework at which I've abstracted from every um, telling and uh, recapitulation of an NF's friends experience in this world and so it leads me to say that there's going to be this there's a starting point for the divine child there is this road of disillusionment, and then there is, at this next point of disillusionment, I think that the NF, they have a true existential existence where they come to the fork in the road where they can either uh, marginalize existence, uh, head towards nihilism, or try to create meaning. But oftentimes, because the NF is so... Um, acutely aware of meaning and their uh, relation to it and just their emotional space and who they are and their existence and identity in the world they come to this at an early age I don't know exactly how early that is for one friend it was about nine years old for another friend it was 12 14 they just come to it at an alarming rate it's almost as like for myself I know analogous to when I first really started reasoning about the world that my reasoning faculty seemed to turn on when I was at least two years old at an, a very early age and for NFs they have this uh, divine child and this sort of uh, cosmopoetic romantic nature that turns on at a very early age they walk through it they walk with it they walk through life with it on con consistently and it's consistently being bombarded, bombarded by um, events and um, pain and suffering and they internalize these um, events and this disappointment and it's rather peculiar to me because it's not something I necessarily uh, relate to. I've gone through trauma in my own life and uh, I remember many of those events uh, vividly and um, 
I can't shake them, but what's so interesting is I don't remember the emotional impressions that they left on me. It's uh, quite um, different for an NF and, and such that an NF, they sit there and they go through the emotional traumas or just the small minute emotional pickings that lead to um, disillusionment with life and um, those things stay with them forever. Now, I don't know if it's literally forever, but because I, I mean, I'm young, so I don't I don't really know if it's literally forever, but it's forever enough for the points and purposes of this uh, sort of um, archetypal model for an NF's life. And um, th their emotions, they, they stay with them and they live out these experiences in a repeated manner. Anytime that they're um, in a situation or presented with a stimulus or a sort of um, confrontation, they are reminded of these, they're re reminded of these events and these uh, emotional. Um, expositions, if you will, that they did not particularly like, because NFs, they don't like negative emotion, um, but they experience such a tremendous amount of it uh, uh, con consistently, it seems, and so what the NF will do is they'll create the other, which is they go from the divine child and they walk this road of disillusionment, they want to protect themselves from the pain, and they l do create a complex in the most Freudian sense of the word, they create a complex which is the other. I don't know, and I don't think that it's necessarily their ego. I think that, and I don't know if it's necessarily their persona in terms of uh, Jungian and Freudian terminology. I just noticed that, that there is this sort of linear progression, and it hits this point where the NF has to make a choice about what life is for them in a sense and they have to do it at such a frightening early age that they're not able to at least I mean I don't I don't know every NF story but at least this is these are the ones I've heard uh, recapitulated uh, over over time and um, they don't really know what to do with the experience so they go to this other and for the ENFP and the uh, ENFP and INFP, ENFJ and INFJ, it could differ. It, it, what the other is for that type could be, it can be so idiosyncratic because the dynamics of their life is totally personal and not privy to our view. But I know for one ENFJ friend, it was being the uh, best student that they could be to please their parents. It was the same thing for an INFJ friend. It seemed like she had SJ parents and they scolded her and they were really... Um, driving her to be a certain way academically and she was the class valedictorian all of these other things and Ian and for another ENFP uh, they, they were the black sheep <coughs> excuse me and they're always being driven to become uh, less idiosyncratic and more type A in their um, expression of themselves and uh, what's so interesting is that because even though even though all of the NFs care about the self and they care about meaning, the outward relationships and the sort of uh, social environments they grow up in, they pay a tremendous amount of attention to it, and it influences them at such an alarming level. I mean, not to the degree it influences, I think, any other type. I think SJs, they just mind authority, and SPs, they um, like their attention and the uh, romantic feel of their parents. And I know as an NT, I, you couldn't tell me to do anything that I didn't agree with. So I just, I was always autonomous. But the NFs, they're so different because they are these uh, very um, sensitive and uh, idealistic. And I don't really want to use that term. They're just these very sensitive, um, emotional warm and uh, divine beings. That's the, that's the best way I can say it because I, maybe I should say here what I think about an NF and why, I, and why I'm concerned with the topic of NFs and self-actualization. Because in the analysis I do of, West, of Western culture, it seems like it's heading to a real place where 
uh, nihilism and just uh, drab dehumanization of uh, at, at least particularly in the in the U.S. is occurring, and it seems like with in reference to history and to um, excuse me in reference to an analysis of history it seems that when you have figures like uh, Joan of Arc and uh, Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King that it's the NF that is the uh, transformative uh, cultural uh, entity in the world and so far as a humanistic and uh, social from a humanistic and social standpoint it seems that the NF, it, they have a specific role in the ecology of existence. And if one can um, make an analogy between existence and um, natural ecologies, it's just that we don't live in a vacuum. And all of our um, beings are seem to be connected in some sort of uh, interplay with one another. And... Um, I think the NF understands this, and it can even ascribe divine qualities to this thing. Carl Jung I, uh, called it the collective unconscious, but it seems like that um, the sphere of the Western consciousness is heading to a place that uh, may be quite dark, and um, it seems that other types, such as SJs, SPs, and NTs, we've sort of taken the helm and uh, dehumanized uh, culture in so many ways and facets and that there is this sort of um, imposter for uh, kindness and um, egalitarianism that is uh, dressed in a very um, cheap totalitarianistic uh, social and uh, liberal um, ideological standpoint and it's not the true light of the world um, I borrow that from uh, Christian um, doctrine but it seems to me that NFs they are the light of the world they are the shamanic figure they are the uh, sage they are the mystic they are the divine ones they are the ones that can come um, before people when all when not, uh, when all is dark and all seems lost and chaos is abounded and creeping over our shoulders it's the nf that can come in and be a uh, transcendent transforming element in that space and lead us out of the darkness and remind us what it means to be human once again insofar as the elements that uh, bound us to a sort of higher law and higher standard i'm not particularly spiritual but science i'm a scientist and well i'm a budding scientist i'm somebody who's learning to be a scientist so I, I know I know things about uh, the world and materially how it stands and what makes it up, but the behavioral wisdom or the right thing or what we ought to do is not something that's privy to just the investigations of the material world, and we need desperately I think the. Um, types of individuals who can um, be so uh, profound and uh, monolithic in their um, existence and embody just the highest good that can be embodied by a human given our imperfect states that I'm willing to take my time as an NT and speak to NFs in terms of actualizing their selves. Because I don't know if there is figures in history that you can have more deference and respect for and what they did for the world and society than Joan of Arc, uh, <clears throat> Mahatma Gandhi, and Martin Luther King. Um, and I'm not saying in all NFs are going to become that and that um, any NF interested in self-actualization and going through that process is going to take on um, such a heavy burden, but... I think that if somebody's going to do it, it's going to be an and it's going to be an NF. And so, let me return back to the uh, model or really the story. It's just the other, the NF. They because of their dislike for the pain and the suffering of the world and their disillusionment with it, they create a false self, and they live through this false self. And I don't know for what time. And I think that there are many NFs out there currently still who are going through this false self 
it's why typology exists because Jung wanted to give people, excuse me, a model and a basis for reintegrating the parts of themselves that were cast off that they need to um, stand against the world and continue to help society um, maintain the right balance and cohesion. Um, you don't want things to become too nihilistic, but you don't want things to become too totalitarianistic either. It's, um, <clears throat> it's all of the types actualizing themselves and existing in this cohesion, this sort of ecological being um, uh, system, this dynamic that keeps life from going into complete oblivion and chaos. At least that's what uh, Jung thought. And I mean, the older I get, I don't really see how that's not true to some extent. And um, I think that so many people are living as zeros and NFs, they're doing that. And um, it's here that I say NFs, if you're living the existence of the, existence of the other currently, start your hero's journey and for the NF the hero's journey begins in going back and uh, regressing and dealing with the pain and the suffering because this is one thing I notice about most of my NF friends especially uh, my ENFP friend and my INFP friend is they collect their experiences and the emotional waves and impressions of these experiences I don't really know what it is that they're collecting, but they're, I don't know if it's an idealized, the idealization of the experience. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm an NT, forgive me. But I know that they take what is good and what is beautiful in life and they focus on that and they dwell on that. They do that to such an extent that it makes this internal fire almost in this cavern and they use it to stay warm through the um, dreariness and the drabness of life. And if you're friends with them, they're more than willing to let you into that space and uh, share it with you so that you can uh, be revivified in some manner. But I would say that though this is a capacity for the um, NF, and I'm not quite sure if the ENFJ and INFJ do it, but I know that they do it with their concepts and their insights. They become the mystic and they um, go into the wilderness and seek um, insight and at the first glance it can seem like um, these are very positive things but behind them is a wake and a trail behind yourself because I'm talking to you specifically in F's it, behind you is a wake and a trail of just disillusionment the um, Sorry, I was washing my fingers trace across my desk. Of disillusionment, the um, the sort of historical events of your life, the painful and seminal epochs of existence for you, the the suffering and the um, black box and plague that was opened and ruined, in a sense, your um, romantic world. And if not ruined, brought the beautiful uh, vantage point you had of the world and met it with a horrific one to now where you can only see where the reality as a dual thing, one consistent of beauty and horror. But what's so interesting, though you see reality like that, you don't embrace your own existence in reality like that. And what I mean is this, NFs, you guys are so sensitive and because you're so sensitive, you do you don't like pain and you don't like suffering. I don't know many people who do like pain and suffering. But it's to say this, that you have settled for this um, fire that is internal or this um, insight that is um, life-giving in some manners. But they're only a fraction of what they could be. They're only, they're, you're selling yourself short. You need to take the pain and you need to take the suffering and put yourself through that, move through those situations, live in it and let it transform you. Because why I say it should transform you and not just purely uh, Jungian rhetoric, but in the sense of this, one thing I've noticed in all of my NF friends is that they have the capacity for transformation in a way that I have not seen in any other individual. I mean, my ideas uh, have a transformative element, and I'm always changing my mind, but I've never seen people who can 
transform and change self as much as NFs can from the INFP to the ENFP to the INFJ and the ENFJ. And it's this transformative element within you that you need to identify with, but you're not going to get to that transformative element if you continue to ignore the pain and the suffering that is extant within your life, your soul, and your being. I say soul because I know NFs like that word. And it's there, and I know dang well it's there. You know dang well it's there, but you need to do something about it and stop ignoring it. And um, because not every NF does this, but I'm saying I noticed that there's a pattern with assuming this other identity, this um, complex, and um, using that to get through life in in a manner, and um, using it as a buttress against the pain and the suffering that exist in the world and in you because it I know for as one of my NFP friends complains about it they can't even watch the news because it's too much for them it pains them too much and I understand not I don't understand as in I feel it but I understand that it's so visceral and so real for you it tears at your heart whatever harp chord strings you have on your soul it rips and pulls at those things in such an excruciating manner that you can't bear to be in the room you can't stand to see somebody hurt you can't stand to see death you can't stand to see these things but they exist in the world and they've happened to you in a certain way and it may be difficult for you to face that but I say face it you face it you overcome it you become something that is rarely seen and something that's wholly necessary because I think the NF because they do have um, such a uh, relation to themselves and meaning, they lose the fact that us as other types, SJs, SPs, NTs, we cannot know and we cannot see, we can, we're not privy to have the schematic elements of our mind to see the world and affect the change and the cause that you can do. Only you can do it, ENFP. That's why I'm calling it a hero's journey, one, because you guys like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and things like that, so I think it would be more appealing to you to call it that than just merely self-actualization. But you have to take this hero's journey, and you have to sit there and integrate what is painful and what is suffering in you. You have to sit there and make that thing um, one. I don't know if you guys like that, but whatever. That's, I'm, that's the best metaphor I can come up with, and this is the invitation to the hero's journey. Because it's to say this, life for all people requires meaning. And nihilism, it is not, a lot of people say it's a philosophy, but I don't think it's merely a philosophy, and I think I've said this in a previous video. It's a place where somebody can go. People, we are in the Western world, whether we realize it or not, we're headed somewhere. And it frightens me where that may be. But we need a light. We definitely need a light. The NF, you are that light. You are that thing. And I hope that I don't offend people with this sacrilegious way I'm about to use this. But you are the one who brings the kingdom of God to man. It's If you don't do it, I swear to everything, if you don't do it, nobody's going to do it. Um, nobody else has the capacity to do it. I, I promise you that. So... I say take the hero's journey and, and actualize yourself. Okay, so um, now to introduce self-determination theory because you're going to need some tools to um, continue to uh, go through this process. And I'd say autonomy, mastery, and purpose are things that serve all people. At least there is the aspects of self-determination theory and intrinsic motivation because... Uh, well, intrinsic motivation, and uh, I mentioned the because uh, you are going to be a guiding light, a guiding force, at least I think so. I think it's quite peculiar that um, I think all NFs go through a messianic phase where they view themselves as a savior, and uh, they uh, take this as a negative thing, but I think it's a natural stage. I think all NFs go through um, an existential crisis, and I think they all go through this messianic phase. Well, I'd say you, the reason you go through that messianic phase is because, holy crap, we need it. Um, because people, all, I mean, SJs through um, their working and their gaining of capital, they can dehumanize the world. SPs through their um, seeking for experiences 
and their tendency towards licentiousness, they can dehumanize human the human experience and tease for our need for uh, rationality, subjugation, control, and innovation. Man, we can really dehumanize the world. We can dehumanize what it. We can dehumanize the world in such a severe way that it's like um, an ecological factor. We need the uh, force that will um, balance and uh, revivify just what it means to be human. It's the NF's job, I think, to teach us what it what it means to be human. And so far as we are the image of God, and I'm not religious, but I'm just using these things as uh, metaphors and trying to paint a picture which isn't completely rational, but I think it's something that, at least I hope it's something that NFs can understand, because um, I'm trying to speak their language. I, I apologize if I'm butchering it, but I'm an NT, deal with it. Um, sorry, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's just to, it's just to say that, um, you're important, uh, you're important and you need to do this. You need to do this for yourself. You need to do this for other people because you want to care about the world. Well, you want to care about people. You don't like the world and I don't blame you for not liking the world and you know dang well you don't like the world. You love other people, but you don't like the world because of what the world does to you what the world does to other people and that's understandable but you need to do something about it I mean we all need to do something about it but you need to do something about it um, and it's to say this and I don't and I don't mean to tell people what to do but it's just I, this was inspired by a conversation I was having with an ENFP friend and an INFP friend and sort of their disillusionment and I had to finally say to them that you need to know that it's on you and that's why I bring up autonomy, purpose, and mastery. Because, okay, for every NF, what they value and what they champion, they're going to protect it. And uh, family, um, friends, and loved ones, the tribes and the units that the ENFJ, INFJ, ENFP, and INFP deem as um, relevant and important, they run your lives in a way that... Uh, you may not see from an uh, inside and internal perspective. Um, I I know I notice it so uh, frequently with an ENFP with my ENFP friend and INFP friends. They're so um, set on being individuals, but they don't see necessarily um, how exhaustingly self-sacrificial they are for their family and for their friends, and how. Sorry. Um, in a way, their family and their friends run them. And I would say that that's not where you're most uh, powerful. You can't even serve people in the highest capacity that you can serve them if you're dependent on them. You need to depend on self, truly depend on self. Not merely make a system of values, but maybe take a page from the ENTJ and be self-sufficient it's on you the responsibility for your uh creation of meaning and fulfillment in the world is on you and i know that your experiences at least this is something that uh, my infp uh, excuse me infp friend has communicated to me when you go through suffering and things hurt and you try to overcome them and you fail you feel weak and vulnerable um impotent and incapable of doing um anything at times and it's overwhelming and that may be true but that shouldn't prevent you from um, still cultivating the self and going towards autonomy and I say it may be true because it's true for all people at some point in time in life um, you know you were taken advantage of well what did you expect you were naive you were ignorant you were a child you were something that was Something that is fundamentally human and something that we all are and at are and go through at some point in time in life. You just happen to be a certain orientation and makeup of existence, so it affected you in a very different way. But I would just say rationally have compassion for your own self. Realize that you couldn't prevent the things from happening that happened to you, and you can't. I'm. I don't. Well. I'm sorry, you can't you can't stop the feelings and you can't stop the pain. You can't stop the anguish. That's not it's it's not going to go away. 
and that, I don't mean to sound pessimistic because I promise you it's going to get optimistic at some point in time but it's it's not going to go away but what it what you can do and what you can see is just what it really means to be human through that you can have a space and a capacity for people and their um, brokenness and people and their uh, impotence and people and their weakness to have a true appreciation for that because you lived it you know it exists you know what it, you know what the other side of uh, human existence is because you've traversed it and I would say that you need to stand in that the um, existence that you have that's you whether you're an ENFJ an INFJ an ENFP or an INFP you need to be autonomous you need to realize that it's all on you you have to um, take responsibility in a sense for your pain and suffering not take responsibility in the sense of it happening happening to you but take responsibility in so far and how you respond to it and how you deal with it I don't know what you believe but you need to create yourself and you can only create yourself by being starting with the subject and being self-referential which if you're excuse me if you're an ENFP and you're an INFP you're good at anyways um, but I just don't you you may be under the guise of um, being um, autonomous and self-directed but not quite realizing you may be somewhat more like a puppet on a string because you just haven't stood you just haven't stood for yourself and you just haven't confronted all of the monsters and the demons that are in the nether regions of your mind okay so moving on from that it was that wasn't too pleasant but you need to do it and cuz it's on you you need to be autonomous maybe not to the, the degree that I am and there's certainly things I need to learn and serve to learn from NFs and that's why I enjoy having them as friends but that's um, and I don't like telling people what to do but autonomy would help you um, and another reason that you need autonomy is because kindness is a real thing to you I mean I try to practice kindness sort of as a virtue and I know it's something good but kindness it matters to an NF like I've not seen it matter to another person but what NFs can do is, through their disillusionment and their disappointment, they're being manipulated by, s secretly manipulated, because even ENFPs and INFPs, the most rugged of individuals, they don't sometimes see the tacit strings of um, the social surroundings that are manipulating them in very subtle ways. Not overtly, and not maybe not intentionally, but things, ties that they need to cut and sever themselves from so they can actually exist and be a real human it's like um, not to say that it's funny me saying that they're the most humanistic of types and types that care about meaning of fulfillment that they need to be a real human but it just I don't know life is paradoxical anyways it's because you care about being kind and you have this real egalitarian um, framework to you yeah, if you want to be kind, you need to be good. And you can't just be sort of accepting and privileging everything. Um, I think you know this, but it's sometimes it's hard for you to um, develop an edge to yourself because you refuse to be alone. You refuse to be out there by yourself in some respects. I think the most um, respectable NFs and the ones that uh, drive the most... Um, sort of awe and wonder are the ones who essentially accept that they're alone. Um, you know, Martin Luther King, he knew he was alone. Gandhi, he knew he was alone. Joan of Arc, Lord knows she knew she was alone. Um, it's like... Uh, Henry David Thoreau, I mean, classic example of an NF. Self-reliance, I mean civil self-reliance and civil disobedience you need it in some respect you need to have an edge what good is your kindness what good is your goodness if it has no edge to it it's like it's um I don't mean to be mean but it's cheap and it's it's cheap in a way because you're just conflict avoidant it's like I don't know any type that's as conflict avoidant as NFs it's like in the time that they do decide to actually lash out in conflict seem just from my perspective at times to be trivial reasons but um, when they really need to be 
uh, conflictual is um, the times that they're not and they're they're the least um, compelled to be. You know, it's um, I wish I could give a concrete example, but I'm not an NF, so I don't live this life, and I can't remember all the stories and their exact details from my friends. But um, I it's from one of my friends' uh, stories is he was in a he was in a room and uh, these people were saying something that he knew just wasn't true. But he didn't say anything because he didn't want to upset anybody. But then I think his brother, he got home and his brother took something from him and he lashed out about it because he felt like his brother wasn't um, respecting his space and hadn't been respecting his space because he didn't respect him as an individual. He, he was an ENFP and he did this, he always talks about the uh, extroverted thinking bitch slap. He, yeah, he, he struck out and did that. And I'm like, well, where was that at when there is some sort of moral ground for you to defend and some sort of ethical um, standpoint for you to really champion? Where was that at then? I mean, you're championing yourself, but it's the best ENFP, the best INFP. They use the self to champion what's right and what's good. Where is that at? Because we need it. <laughs> Sorry, but it's like why I say you need to sit there and be alone and deal with some autonomy and try to accept that in, and integrate that into yourself because you have to you have to sit there and um, present yourself in society and be something to contend with. So on to the contention part. That's where uh, mastery comes in because, um, Look, you're living in a world of SJs, SPs, and NTs, especially in a, if you're an American living in this culture. You need to be able to do something, something of value, and something that people can say is important. Um, also, something to command um, our respect, because I'm sorry when you talk to an NT, I mean, uh, I have five NF friends, and so I'm sort of used to them, and uh, I, I know their language at this point in time, and uh, I have a um, true uh, care and concern from them. They're part of my inner circle. But I would say this is that you know, especially if you're an NP type, that the, the rest of the world can't deal with you and doesn't really know how to deal with you. If you want to give it a space and a vehicle to sort of take you serious and also increase the edge you have to your good, you need to get a skill and you need to get an expert. You need to get a skill and you need to have an expertise within some domain of knowledge and make that thing work for you so it can be a platform at which you can create meaning from. Um, you know, I have a, I have like all, like, man, out of those five, three of those five friends work for nonprofit agencies. And it's like, okay, if you're going to work for a nonprofit and you're going to um, go out and create change in the world like that, well, then what? I mean, like, what change are you going to create if you don't actually have some sort of skill? If you want to go to uh, Madurai, India and sit there and help people, then it would help if you were an engineer, a surgeon, or something that just had some sort of uh, practical value. And I'm not saying don't do the humanities and the arts and the things that you like to do, but maybe think a little more to the broader sense because you want to live something out and your existence, it craves for you to live something out. I mean, at least that's what one friend sort of communicates to me. I don't think they know that they're communicating that to me. But when I am sitting there listening to them talking, I know, I can see it, man. You're something that's like a phoenix. You're a transformative agent. And you're always constantly transforming yourself. I mean, I don't know if I finished that point previously, but it's like when we're talking about autonomy, mastery, and purpose, why I know that the NF can do this is because that um, even if you're talking about an ENFP or an INFP, what they can do with the self and so far as taking experiences and emotional impressions and culling them and um, creating frameworks and then assimilating the information. I don't know what it is they do, but they take an experience and they take all the emotion and the meaning contained in an experience and they suck it into themselves and they sit there and work on it like little honeybees or something and they make themselves up with it. They kind of construct, they spin. They spiral and spin up out of nothing. It's just really weird how in NF, they build themselves from the bottom up. Like, I don't know any other type. I swear, like, it may sound strange, but the, I, I swear I see that. And it's like, there's, you okay, so you guys like Harry Potter, right? <laughs> Harry Potter, when he's fighting the Basilisk, and um, he gets bitten by the snake, and 
the phoenix comes down and it cries on him and it dies and it's born as is reborn as something wide and glorious you know that's you i swear that's you uh the phoenix not harry but the phoenix that's you um christ on the cross i hope this is not sacrilegious for people but deal with it even so if it is because i'm trying to get a message across and i need images powerful ones to communicate this statement but christ on a cross that thing the dying savior the um thing that's going to go down and rise again that's you like that's all people to some extent but that's really you you won't face the pain you won't face the suffering you won't be alone because you don't think that's you but i promise you that's you and i'm sorry to be so passionate and demanding but i don't normally talk about things like this i'm an nt so uh give me a break but so autonomy and mastery and then the final element is purpose when you sit there and you um go through the suffering and you go through the pain and you try to self overcome and you try to actualize and you build up a skill and a repertoire and some form of mastery you're going to create a ton of meaning and when that's done that is the first part of your hero's journey you are essentially initiated as the hero and you need to come back you need to come back to us like because this this for you and i think self actualization for all people is quite a lonely process um because it's something that's existential in nature and i can go into the tenets of existentialism but i don't think i need to um anyways i'm going to digress even further and say this that once you do this and you're initiated as the hero you need to come back to the kingdom and bring back the boom to the kingdom what is the boom well piaget would call it an a an equilibrated state it's the greatest possible good for all people in context to one another and for reality and uh the ecosystem at one time you can joseph campbell calls it bringing back the boom to the kingdom and uh hero and the hero's journey and you need to bring back that boom another way you can think about that boom is what i said before earlier the repent for the king the kingdom of heaven is near bring the kingdom of god back to man it's like it's wholly necessary um and i don't want to say why because it's I'll sound too dark and pessimistic, but I'll just say this that for the quality of your life and the quality of the life of the people around you that you're intimately connected to, you need to do this cuz you need to be your best self for yourself and for others. Um it'll help you create a tremendous amount of meaning in life. And um the only reason I also and the also the other reason I encourage it is just because I like enoughs and I think that um The world it misunderstands you guys and um you don't really know what to do sometimes in life and I didn't give you sort of what job you should have or anything like that but I think that you should know stories I I promise to everything I think uh lit, uh story hero stories or um motifs uh for the human existence but man it's something that seems to be more uh resonate more with NTs and uh, excuse me not NTs but NFs than anything else and so oh uh, yeah uh that's self actualization um at least my ideas on it and how it relates to the NF and um i hope that you're able to take something from that and that it's helpful in some capacity and um uh after a few more videos of these natures where they're uh where they differ from the things I typically talk about or return to my our previous content. So, um thank you NFs. Uh if you have any questions or thoughts, uh leave me a comment uh, and uh yeah.